Well, so it's finally time to hopefully get some work done on this thing. I have a coworker who's pretty interested in it. He's got Bermuda grass and uh, says he's been looking for a mower like this for a while. So I'm gonna see if I can get it going for him. I know it already has compression, but the pull cord broke when I was trying to get it running a couple weeks ago. So go ahead and move the bin here. Make it a little bit easier to work on. So this thing likely has carb issues. Before the pull cord broke on me, I was able to get this thing to fire over and it's not drawing any fuel onto the carburetor, so I have to take off the uh, gas tank and carburetor and also take off the recoil unit to replace the pull cord. All right, so the first thing we'll do is take the three bolts out of the recoil. And remove the recoil. So, turn that aside. Ratchet's working fine. I know it's got sparks, so we won't tear into that. But now we can remove the air filter cover. So with the air filter cover off, just remove the air filter, and now we can remove these four bolts to gain access to the underside. While we're here, we can look at all the linkages and make sure everything's working as it should. This is the governor vane. That seems to be actuating just fine. I'll be cleaning all this stuff up, getting a lot of this grass and filth off of the tank. Um, kind of really no other way around that. One thing that is of minor annoyances with these is there is a number of bolts and screws that you're going to have to remove. So you're going to have to remove this bottom one, which holds the bottom mount for the tank. You're going to have to remove the two bolts that are holding the carburetor to the side of the motor. And then you have your ground wire, which goes right into that little guy right there, when this makes contact, or should make contact, it grounds out the magneto to shut the motor off. So like I said, there's a few things that do have to come off. Um, you are gonna have to pull your throttle cable off, as well as the governor arm linkage. That's a lot easier to do once you have a lot of the other stuff removed. So I've mostly got this disconnected, and I forgot that this switch unit right here can actually stay here with the motor. I'll just let it kind of lean off to the side like that. So I did loosen up those two bolts. What really helps is this little wrench right here. It's an early form of a ratcheting wrench. Works perfect for that bottom bolt. So we'll just take the two mounting bolts out of the carb and that allowed us to move it just enough to get the tank out of the way. And there you have it. So now I'll just disconnect all this stuff and I'll meet you guys at the workbench. And our next step is to replace the diaphragm and spring. All you have to do to get to these is remove these four screws. And I always like to kind of pry this little cover off very carefully. There we go. So here's the old diaphragm and gasket the old spring and retainer. So I'm going to go and blow this out with the air compressor. I already did the rest of the carb, but I'll do uh, the inside as well. Here's our new diaphragm and gasket, as well as the new spring. So you just put the spring back in like that. And there's your retainer. That's all you do to replace these. So now you can put the screws back in. That's all there is to this. 
So the rest of the carbs in pretty good condition. I do have another one of these on hand. These things are not the easiest to replace and this one's still pretty good. It's nice and pliable. It's uh, flexible still and the bottom doesn't look too bad. It's just a little yellowed. So in probably a couple years time, he'll probably want to replace this. But this is the part number for the correct one. So let's get the gas tank. And the gas tank needs to be drained out. So I'll go dump all this into the rider. So here's the gas tank. And as you guys can see, it's actually pretty clean inside. So I did uh, dump all the fuel out. And then I blew out the inside of the tank and the outside with the air compressor. So it's nice and clean. One thing that's always important to change on these tanks is the carburetor gasket. And hopefully it comes off in one go. Doesn't look like it will. I'll use my handy Craftsman gasket scraper. So here is the new gasket. As you can see, it just lines up like that. So now we can reinstall the carburetor. And what's nice about these tanks is you can more or less line them up with the edge of a table just like this. And this one all the way out here, we won't need to worry about until we mount the controls back onto the gas tank. Let's skip a little bit of the reinstallation of everything just to kind of save time. I don't know if I'm going to need to adjust the carburetor at all, so I'll know that once I can you know, get this thing to idle. But I've got everything else reinstalled. The throttle cable works as it should. The governor vane works. And before I put everything back onto the motor, I did blow off everything with compressed air. And it cleaned it up pretty well for air. But I am going to give this thing a nice cleaning before I bring it over to the guy. I get a lot of comments from people on how to replace the pull cords on these older style Briggs and Stratton recoils. And honestly, they're really not all that bad. A lot of people think you need to remove the recoil cog or wheel or whatever you want to call it, but you really don't have to. And it's a lot easier to not remove it because there's a wound up spring that's inside of there. You can replace those if they break. They're not the easiest to do, but in order to replace one of these, just the pull cord. What I like to do is use a pair of locking pliers. And with a halfway decent pair of gloves, what you want to do is remove the old part of the rope if it's still in there. And then you want to turn this around counterclockwise to put tension on the spring. And I usually turn them about seven full turns or so. And then you want to very carefully line that little hole right there back up as best you can with the hole that goes to the inside of the recoil. Grab your pair of locking pliers. Some of these are a lot easier than others because on the newer ones, there's usually a little tang or a little nipple that makes it a little bit easier to stop this thing from moving when you don't want it to. But you don't want to put a whole hell of a lot of tension on this wheel because it is plastic. And there's two ways you can fish one of these through. You can either cut it diagonally and singe it a little bit with a lighter, or you can wet, it, wet the tip of the rope a little bit with your saliva. And you'll have to mess with it a little bit to get it to go through. Sometimes it's a lot easier to do this with a lighter. And once you have it through enough, you can grab the tip of it, there you go. So just pull it through and put a small knot on the end of it. Give it a little bit of a tug. Tighten it up. And pull it on through. Carefully remove your locking pliers while keeping your hand on the cord so it doesn't pull the whole thing back in on you and just see how much of it it'll take. So it kind of stops right about there. So we'll cut out about six inches and that's where we will reattach the handle to. And there you have it. 
does everything it's supposed to, so let's get it back on the mower. So the recoil is back on. Now I'm going to reinstall the top part of the air hack, throw some gas in her, and hopefully it'll start. All right, so I can't remember if I told you guys in another video that I did check the oil in this thing. Uh, it does, in fact, have the oil right where it should be up to the threads. So it runs, that's good to know. Now the next step is to uh, change the old oil, throw some new oil in. All right, so now I'm gonna dump the oil out. clean some of that oil off and then we'll put some new oil in. Alright, so here is one of the two oil fill caps that are usually on these. There's also another one in the back. And what we'll do is it's probably going to use about 20 or so ounces of oil and I'm putting heavy duty 30 weight oil in. Probably good. So now I'm going to do a quick cleanup of the area and uh, get ready to restart this thing. Well, unfortunately, there isn't much live grass to try this thing out on, but we can try a little bit. here it's idling pretty good now I fine-tuned the carburetor I had to go in basically an eighth to a quarter turn and find that perfect sweet spot so it would stop surging but it's running really good now here's a little bit of mowing with it even though the grass is all dead
as you guys can see, you definitely get the golf course look with one of these. And that's what he wants it for because he wants to put a uh, putting green into his yard. But these are just really nice mowers for having that nice clean cut. I wish the ground was flatter and the grass was greener. So I can show you guys the uh, type of performance it really does, but the dad's lawn has already been cut. He's got a yard service. So I'm not going to bother with that, but I might sharpen these blades up some. They look like they have been sharpened at some point. But definitely give it a good detail with the uh, pressure washer clean it up some and get it ready for him but I think he's going to be plenty happy with one of these these are just really nice machines so I hope you guys enjoyed this long-winded video about this thing and I'm finally glad to get it out of the hoard amazingly and ironically these are uh, kind of hard to sell namely because they're heavy and people think they're inherently dangerous which they kind of are and I guess the third reason is because people with Bermuda don't realize that they really are better suited with one of these than a normal rotary mower. But stay tuned for more, boys. You all stay close.